I just picked up the new Apple MPX module, the W5700X GPU, and I'm really excited to test it against my Radeon 7. Uh, I had sold the Radeon on eBay, but before I let it go, I decided I would run some benchmarks with some regular projects. You know, these are real tests with three recent projects I finished. A lot of the stuff you see is like numbers and random things and you know, I rebooted and I cleaned everything off and it's a fresh install. The only thing running is Cinebench or whatever. And it's, these are, you know, I wanted to do tests that were real world. This is what I'm doing. This is, these are the projects I'm sending out for clients. And how much time is this card going to save me? How much time are these cards going to cost me? And what will that mean for my overall business? So uh, let's jump right into it. First off, the day my 5700X arrived, Barefeet's posted their comparison. And if you haven't seen it yet, check out the link below. It's really interesting. But basically they came to the same conclusion I had been guessing someone would, that the Radeon 7 and the W57X are about even. One edge is out one in one place and one in the other place, but for general use and, and everyday use, they're pretty spot on. I went with the 5700X for a few reasons. Uh, first off, because selling my Radeon 7 and the original 580X MPX module made the upgrade cost like 50 or 100 bucks, which I would have gladly paid just to have the extra Thunderbolt ports. If there was a card for that for 100 bucks, I would have bought that all day long. So I said, all right, if we're just gonna trade these two out, it's a no-brainer for me. Secondly, I can put the computer to sleep now. Before, I couldn't have put the computer to sleep because the fans on the Radeon 7 would kick up to 100%, and it was super loud and crazy. So now I have uh, kind of a little bit better all-in-one solution for this computer I paid a lot of money for, uh, and I feel good about it. For the performance, I ran a couple tests, and again, you know, I said at the beginning, this is not a scientific test. These are projects that I had recently finished, kind of a wide range, and I wanted to test them out and see how long it would take to actually render them. And uh, the real world examples mean more to me because that's gonna affect my day to day and it's gonna tell me how I'm gonna see improvement or not improvement from a certain card or piece of equipment or whatever else. I went real scientific for my timing. I pointed my phone at the screen, pressed record and uh, hit render and just recorded the screen so I could see exactly how long it would take to render each clip. And uh, just so you know, these are all rendering to and from my QNAP NAS uh, over 10 GBE. And they're all saved in 264 two pass variable bitrate at 25 megabits per second average and 50 megabits per second peak. So, not huge files, not tiny files, but a pretty good quality. The first video is super straightforward. It's one stream of Canon Raw Light from a C200, and I edited it down to about a minute and a half with some After Effects link comps and uh, minor color correction, but nothing too crazy going on. And with the Radeon 7, the render time was three minutes and 53 seconds, which was, I thought was pretty good considering. And that same export with the W5700X was four minutes and 49 seconds. So the Radeon won that one and saved about a minute in time, which I thought was interesting because that was more than I would have guessed on a video like that that was that short. The second video has a little bit more going on. It's a TEDx presentation I filmed uh, on two Canon C200s. One was set to record 4K AVC, one was recording 4K MP4, and then I had a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K recording 4K proxy files for a wide shot just to have, uh, you know, to intercut with everything else. And it had light color correction, some scaling to it, and, uh, and about 15 minutes in length or so. And this test really blew my mind because I thought at this length, there's probably gonna be a much bigger variance based on what we had seen with the other video, but it was exactly the same amount of time. The renders on each took 18 minutes and 20 seconds. Exactly the same. I, I went uh, as far in as checking the down to the frame for how long each one had taken, because I shot the video and then I figured out the time, and it was exactly the same frame even. 18 minutes, 20 seconds, and 15 frames for bull, which was crazy. The third video is a lot more involved. It was three to four minutes long and it had 4K Canon C-RAW from the C200, Blackmagic B-RAW from the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. It had color correction, scaling, and it had Red Giant's Cosmo 2 filter, which I love that filter for, you know, kind of quick skin cleanup and making everybody just look a little bit nicer when you got quick turnarounds and you can't spend as much time on it as you want. 
but it destroys render times. It is far and away the longest rendering effect I have. And sometimes I'll even, you know, just run the export without it on there and then bring the MOV back in and just run it on the MOV because something with the RAW and the Cosmo just takes forever. And with the Radeon 7, uh, this render took 41 minutes and 50 seconds. And with the 5700X, it took 43 minutes and 55 seconds. So about two minutes and five seconds difference, which over the span of almost 45 minutes is not really uh, that bad. And I was pretty impressed with the results. The Radeon 7 beat the 5700X by a little bit in each of these tests, but uh, there's a lot of benefits to the MPX module and the 5700X that uh, make me happy that I went that way. So if you like videos like these, hit subscribe below. I've did, done the same test on my Mac Pro Trash Can 12 core dual D700 before I sold it. And I ran the tests uh, from NVMe instead of the NAS over 10 GBE. And those results were actually really interesting and uh, I can't wait to share them, which I'll do in a future video. If you like stuff like this, talking about business and video production and uh, kind of running a video business, be sure to subscribe and I'll be trying to post content at least twice a week. Thanks.